to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 2, Lesson 3, Functions and Custom Events. In this lesson, we'll explain the purpose of a function. We're going to demonstrate how to create a function. We'll explain the purpose of an event. And then we'll demonstrate how to create a custom event. So a function is a node within a blueprint that can be executed from another graph within that blueprint. Now, in theory, a lot of the things that we've already been using in this game are functions. So when we say things like set rotation or set location, those things are all functions. Additionally, some of the math functions we've been using, like multiply, or in the last lesson we used the atan2 function, those are also functions. So in theory, it could be said that a node is just a function. And Unreal Engine allows us to create our own functions within a blueprint. And there are just some basic rules about how a function works. A function can have a maximum of one execution input pin and one execution output pin. The execution pins being the white pins that are usually at the top of a node. And notice here that I said it may. Some functions don't require an input and some functions don't require an output. Additionally, functions may have input variables and or output variables. And a function may have a local variable within that function that is only accessible to that function. So let's talk about how to create a function in Unreal Engine. Here I am back in my project and we can see that things were starting to get a little bit messy. And if we wanted to, we could start to clean up some of this by creating functions. Over here on the left hand side, you'll see functions and we can use the plus sign to create a new function. And you'll see that it creates this new tab called new function zero. We can change this to call it, you know, test function. And then we can use our own nodes within this function to define what this function does. So for instance, we can use a print string. And now every time we call this function test function, it'll print to the screen. And we can test this by going back into our class, dragging our test function out, and plugging it into our begin play. And if we compile and press begin play, we'll notice that we typed hello to the screen. So this is very useful if you have blocks of code that you wanna call throughout your blueprint, and you don't wanna to have to keep rewriting them every time. You can collapse them into a function and then just have one node in your graph that has all of that functionality built into it. Let's delete that function and create one that's actually useful. Let's take all of this code because it has a definite functionality and let's make it into a function. We can select all of these and right click and then say collapse to function. And now we just have one function on our graph. And this code's functionality was to check if the mouse is moving. So let's call this is mouse moving. And notice we have a return node that already has our Boolean there. So we can rename this to mouse is moving. Let's double click on this and we can see now all of our nodes have been collapsed into this function. And this is great for keeping things really tidy. But at the moment, this function actually has no way of being called because we're not connecting to one of the execution pins. So we could disconnect here and connect it like this. And then on every event tick, we would call is mouse moving, would return our Boolean, and then it would go to this branch, which would then continue our functionality. Let's disconnect this though and I wanted to show what's called a pure function. If we select pure here, you notice that the execution pins went away. And now we have a node that looks similar to these nodes down here where there is no execution pin. We can just have it on our blueprint graph. If we go to the Unreal Engine documentation and we look about a pure function, it says a function can be either pure or impure. The main difference is that pure functions promise not to modify state or the members of the class in any way, while impure functions are free to modify state. Pure functions are generally used for getter functions or operators that just output a data value. So because we're only getting information, 
get player controller get input we can create this as a pure function because we're not actually changing the state of the game we're just getting some information doing a little bit of math and then returning a boolean that we, then we can use to set this branch let's compile and test to make sure that everything still works we can see that we can still rotate our tower and when we stop moving our mouse our tower stops rotating so this is working as intended we can also do the same thing with all of this down here. So what is this group of code doing? We're taking our mouse movement and we're creating a rotator based upon the direction the mouse is moving. So we could right click, collapse to function, and call this get mouse movement rotator or whatever else you wanted to call it. Let's make this a pure function as well. And now if we move these nodes around, we have a blueprint graph that's much cleaner to look at. And if somebody looks at this at a glance, they can see that on every tick, we're gonna check if our mouse is moving. And if it is moving, we're gonna get the mouse movement rotator and set the world rotation of our static mesh. So this is much easier to read for a human. And if somebody did wanna know how we were doing it, they could just open these functions and take a look for themselves. So the next thing I want to talk about is a custom event. A custom event resides on your blueprint graph. Here we can see we have a few different events, event begin play, event actor begin overlap, event tick. And in a lot of ways, an event and a function can be interchanged. But in Unreal Engine, event has a very specific purpose. Events are asynchronous, which means multiple events can be happening at the same time. And in a game where there's many, many things happening on a screen, especially in a complex game, we want to be able to have some asynchronous behavior. We don't want every single thing to have to wait its turn. So we can call an event in our functions or through other events, and we can let all of them be happening at the same time. One issue with events, though, is that there's no guarantee of when it will complete. And this may cause unexpected bugs. So if we need to have absolute control over when something will complete, we probably want to use a function. And an event must be used whenever we want to manipulate time. So a function cannot control your game's time. And we'll talk more about what this means in future lessons. Similar to a function, an event can have input variables. However, a function cannot return a variable. Because with an event, there's no guarantee of when it will complete. There's no end of the chain, whereas a function has a defined start and end. And if we're getting into multiplayer, an event can also be replicated. So now let's talk about creating a custom event in our game. In the event graph, if we right click and type custom, we can see add custom event. And if we click that, it's going to allow us to name this. Now, later on, we're gonna talk about the health. So let's just create an event right now called take damage. And we notice that our event has a red node similar to these other events here. And we can call this event by dragging off and type the name of it. And we can see that we're able to call our take damage event with this node, which means every time we trigger it, it will call whatever functionality is here. So let's test this by using a print string. And now every time we move our mouse and we set a rotation, we're also going to trigger the take damage event, which will print hello to the string. Let's compile and press play. And we notice that when I'm moving my mouse now, we get hello. And when I stop, the hellos will go away. So that's a little bit about how to set up a custom event. Let's delete this from here and we'll leave this down here for later on when we set up the damage taking functionality of our tower. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get our tower's cannon firing. And for this, we wanna use the left mouse button. If we right click and go to input, and then mouse events, we can see that there's a left mouse button. And when we select that, it gives us our left mouse button event, which has pressed and released. But let's say we also wanted to allow people to press space. We would have to have two different events. 
and we don't want this. So let's set up our inputs to have an event for firing our cannon. We'll go to product settings and then inputs and we're going to create an action mapping and we'll call this fire cannon. And similar to our axis mappings, it's giving us the option to set a key for this. Let's select the keyboard and click our left mouse button and it'll automatically take that input. We can also add another input, select the keyboard and then press space and it will automatically fill that in. So now we can fire a cannon using two different buttons, left mouse button or the space key. Let's go back to our tower and we'll delete this and we're going to type fire cannon and we'll see that we have that event here that we can put into the scene. Let's drag off of here and type print and we'll get a print string node and let's compile and test this. Now every time I click my mouse I'll get a little event that's calling hello to the screen. In the next lesson we're going to learn about spawning actors into a scene and we're going to use this for creating our cannonballs.